Crystal Spud has the apocalypse. <laughs> Death by Bank Holiday, isn't it? Oh man. Uh, isn't it awful that we're so fucking privileged that like our biggest complaint is we're all bored. Why like there's millions of people around the world living in destitute and they're they're fucked and we're like oh, bored. I've watched all of Netflix. Oh my god, did you like Tiger King? Yeah, you like Tiger King. Oh my god, he totally killed Carl Baskin. Oh my god. <laughs> I have to say, I'm not bored at all. I, 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 I very, very seldom suffer from boredom. Um, but uh, no, I, I get your point, though. <laughs> I understand. There was a thing I've seen earlier on on Twitter or Facebook or Reddit or some sort of social media. And it's about this absolutely horrifying story of this homeless man in some country who has to live under a bridge and no one will sell him any food and he hasn't eaten in four days. And he, ha you know, he's just like, I'm about to die. Can someone help me? And you kind of go, well, hopefully he'll get sorted. But I mean, if he's doing it, then there's, you know, I assume, you know, any other X amount of million people that are in the same situation. Like, mm. I mean, but like but uh, Tiger King. <laughs> Tiger King, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's distract the masses by showing them the dregs of society with big cats. It's, 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 it's a, such a bizarre uh, documentary series. But like, yeah. I did a little digging on it as well. Like the, the main producer is one of these cat people who's kind of a rival of all those cat people as well. And all oh, right, so I haven't watched it all. I've zero yeah, interest. Yeah, no, in it, so. just, just <laughs> it's 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 like the Kardashians, but with cats, basically. Right. I can you know, also I, proudly say I've never seen an episode of the Kardashians. The only thing I know about yeah. the Kardashians is um, Keith Lemon's piss take of the Kardashians that he did on oh, uh, right. the show, nice. which is you yeah. know good enough for me. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, no, you're better off away from all that trashy telly anyway you know um what's ireland like ireland's fine I, ireland you can definitely feel that people are um at the end of their tether and uh, you know like when you walk down the street there's an attempt at social distancing but not really you know like <laughs> it used to be people would walk across the other road or, or you know the other side of the road or there'd be a thing now it's like it's getting less than a meter and there's lots of people stopping to talk in the shopping center and you know families that aren't allowed to meet will meet in the shop in you know the supermarket. Yeah. Because you're both allowed to be there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And, uh, but like, uh, there was never, I don't think anyone I've spoken to uh, at all was uh, in any way afraid of getting it or dying or anything. Like that. that was never a thing that came into, yeah. uh, because as we said before, you'll be grand is, is the, the nature of the thing. But it, it's just the, uh, I suppose it's the kind of the, the locked inness and that the, the kind of the cabin fever that's that's getting people. But uh, it's hard to know. Well, I mean, it's like, what do you do? That's like, because at some point you have to let people out. That's as simple as that. Like at yeah. some point you have to let, mm -hmm. you know, it it come true. But uh, it's just you know, it, it's like it's hard to. I think it's hard to be kind of a hundred percent behind it when there's so few people dying here or sick here or whatever but I mean that's the whole point that's what you know it's, it's well, yeah, that means it's that. Working. but, like, but, it, like, it, but it, I just think it'll make it harder that if something happens again similar to this people just will go no because look what happened four people died last time that we yeah did yeah yeah it'll have to be that like okay so we're all let back out in three weeks time but then like if a thousand people die over two weeks then everyone's gonna go oh 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 uh oh, yeah. Uh oh, yeah. But like, if if the numbers like stay the same or are less, then people are gonna be like, I don't give a shit, Do you know? Yeah, and I mean, the whole thing was that it was never the, the lockdown was never to um, stop people dying. It was to give us time to get ready for all of these people who are going to die. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. so. It's 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 still, it's quite quite morbid. And I know it's people saying, oh, it's still you know it's less than would be the seasonal flu and all that and you can get figures from all different countries and all things that'll that agree with you or disagree with you depending on what the whole thing is but um yeah it depends because i know that, that like the irish death counts are counting nursing homes and things like yeah. that but the uk aren't right apparently some... today apparently today right. they would have been released by now but i was i i only listened to the news in the morning apparently today the uk are releasing these deaths from nursing homes but they're not going to be they haven't been factored into the numbers so far. So even though like people were panicking that the UK almost hit a thousand deaths there two days in a row, um, it's way worse. No, it was way worse. Like <laughs> yeah, all your yeah. old people are, are. But yeah, like it depends on, on what country you're in and 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 what we're counting as deaths and stuff. And like I know people, I my death count stands at two, 
Right. Uh, to but but like there weren't there weren't people I know. Well, no, one of them one of them, one of them owned the pub I used to work in. And All right. An- another woman is kind of someone who I'd know to like the second or third degree kind of thing. You know, I know who she is, but I wouldn't remember her face. That kind of thing. You know. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Uh, Unless she like, was wearing a particular jumper or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sister or something. No, like, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, the, 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 and, and, but then like, there's loads of people I know who have had it or definitely say they have it. I'm one of them. I, I'm, I'm 99.99% sure I had it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, and loads of people think they had it as well. So, like, it's just, like, you don't want to get all con- conspiratorial about it. But, like, no, at the same time... No, absolutely not. <laughs> like, like, but like, just what you were saying as well. Like, like we're powerless really to do anything about it except just sit and sit and take it, unless we all get annoyed enough where we're like, right, petrol bombs, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that you know, that that poster I sent you where we were trying to organise mass, pro- you know, public <laughs> protests on Easter Sunday and stuff like. Oh, How'd people, that go? Yeah, oh, I don't know. I just I, I assume it didn't, or we would have heard about it. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that whole one good kind of benefit of the whole thing of this the coronavirus is that it's pretty much killed all interest or belief in conspiracy for me. That's it. I'll never believe in a conspiracy again. <laughs> it's all oh my god! It's when everyone just starts sounding like the most you know like those old um, Facebook websites. It was like lame book or fail book, where it was just the yeah, weirdest yeah, people yeah, put up yeah, things yeah. like everyone sounds like that now. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe anyone. Yeah. And it's like the only conspiracy that definitely isn't a cons- you know, that no one is talking about is that the government are actually trying to battle a pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> you know, that, I, no, that, that's definitely not happening. That, of, I saw of all one, things, comment, I saw one happening. comment today and they're like, uh, it was like, imagine if Mary Lou was, uh, and Sinn Féin were running the country. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that was good. <laughs> I mean, you know, they've never been in power before. They'd be no. screwed all together. I don't know. It's... Um, so like, can you do? I mean, do you know? Do you know what I feel bad about is that I'd like to know if I had it because if I have had it, I'd like to do something, and in any way, just to, like I can't make the surgical masks. Like they're taking surgical masks, and if anyone has a sewing machine, you can make them and con- and contribute. You know, I can't yeah. do that. But like, even if I could just give blood or something, and like I can't go to the hospital, n- n- not sure if I have had it or not. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I've had it, but yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I can't get this test. So like, even, anything if I could do and walk fucking dogs or fucking out and but like I'm just like, but but then people will say to you, no, the best thing you do is just just avoid people, stay at home, just lock down and. Well, that's it. You okay, know. I, all right. Yeah. But like, you just kind of feel like, I'd like to do something. I mean, you see the hospital. There's a hospital beside us. You can see it from our window. A helicopters have been coming in, uh, now and again and stuff. And you're just like, oh, gee, like those people in there are working their holes off, getting yeah, yeah, paid yeah. shite money, yeah. <laughs> you know. Because any 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 Polish doctor who wants to make a ton of money goes to England or Ireland or, or further afield. And uh, fuck all of them. Like Poland has the lowest uh, doctor patient ratio in the EU. Um, right, right, right. Yeah, Deliberately it's, it's pretty, or just that just happens. Like it's yeah. just it's just people get it's um it's like the way like in Ireland. We have a brain drain of doctors, and they usually go to America or Canada, but in Poland they go to UK or Ireland. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, because the money is so much better, and you're still not that far away from home. You're only three hours on a flight. You know what I mean? So England and Ireland are really are really good. Plus, it's English. Almost everyone here speaks English now, of like our generation and younger. Anyway, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that, and like you just see, like these people are fucking heroes, and like I'm sitting at home and I'm um, making podcasts. <laughs> Well, assume that's it. I mean, that, but that's like I mean, not to say I'm a hero, but I, you know, no one mentions that I'm a hero. But uh, but I suppose the thing is to do, it's do the thing you can do, which is do podcasts, make videos, do some art, you know, keep keep people around you, spirits yeah, up, look after yeah. all that. Do the thing, you know, it's that thing we I've mentioned before. You know, tend to the part of the garden that you can reach, rather than worrying about all the stuff that you can't do, and you know, the flowers in front of you are wilting. You yeah, know, yeah, do yeah, the yeah. do the thing you can do. Um, but I mean, it's hard because you can say that you you know you think. You want to be, I suppose, more impactful or more kind of relevant to the greater thing. Yeah, you don't want to look yeah. back in 25 but, but years ago. what is that, man? And what is did that, you do? What did you do yeah, during, yeah. during it? But uh, like, what well, is, that? Like... Is, that, is that? Is that an ego thing or is that, uh, what's the opposite of the ego? Like, is that a low confidence thing and you want to, want to contribute and you feel guilty kind of thing? Which, which is it? Or is it, it, it are, are they both fucking different sides of the same coin? 
it gets you know and i'm sure it's dependent on the person too some people well some people say that there's no selfless acts and you know that there's a good argument to be made um no matter what phoebe from friends likes to think about it all but um but i i i would say it's um yeah i think an awful lot of it is wanting to be the hero i would i would suggest that yeah. wanting to be the person who saves the day um when it tends... but isn't that what we're supposed to be yeah, if 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 you know you're you're pure of heart and your uh, intentions are all <laughs> right there. But if you look at it for self gratification, if you want, if you're doing it to help people rather than getting a pat in the back, and I suppose you have to ask yourself which it is. None of you know the answer to that. Mm. Yeah. But it's like that whole thing of people, you know, um, everyone thinks they're in the apocalypse or have done for their entire, you know, the entire existence of humanity. We're about to hit, and it's kind of suggested that the reason for that is because we can't. I can't understand the world or don't want to have a world that exists without us in it. So the only way for it is that it all it's all going to end because yeah, our yeah, brains course, can't yeah. face the fact yeah. that, you know, as uh, Louis C.K. says that, oh, lots of stuff happens when you die. You're just not part <laughs> of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a couple of dreams during the week, uh, reoccurring dreams that were very similar. Well, I, well do, do reoccurring dreams have to be exactly the same? I don't think so. I, no, I, I, I like the so. idea of thematically similar. Is yeah, similar yeah, yeah. So these yeah. were thematically similar. And it was that I was in this, uh, you know, this thing that Grant Morrison talks about, this super alien thing. that The, the lava thing, that thing. Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was in that and right. spat out of it. And, and the first, was the first one? Yeah, and the first dream <laughs> was funny because uh, just before I woke up, a voice went, ha, gotcha. And then, oh, no. <laughs> I woke up like that. I was like, I went, oh, oh, holy shit. Oh, what was that? What was that? And then about two or three days later, and then I had it again, or a similar one, but, and it was like, do you remember Ninja Turtles? And do you remember the, the bad guy, uh, Krang or Clang? What was his name? Oh, one of them. Not Shredder. Shredder's leader. No, I, the yeah? guy with the thing in the stomach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. he was this kind of brainy texture. So yeah. this larva thing that I was inside was kind of like that, all sticky and pink and blah, you know? Right. And did you feel yeah. a, or wake up feeling dirty or anything like that? Or no, were you just, actually dirty? No. <laughs> did you be out in the forest? <laughs> oh God. Don't go, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> you know what I'm don't thinking? Do. Um uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but um, it's an interesting to 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 get to carve said at that place. Um that there was I think it was the Irish, not the Irish Times, the New York Times, and one of the Times is one of the big papers, so you know it's real. Was a, did a, an article about the fact that uh, everyone has experienced, you know, way more intense yeah, dreams and dream yeah, recall, yeah. just because the whole kind of less psychic noise in the kind of thing of that you're just not surrounded by as much people, I suppose, or uh, you know, it's just, it's very selective. Oh, that's the argument, of, is it? Oh, okay. Well, one of the arguments. The other argument, yeah. of course, is that there's a great awakening and that the astral plane is clear and the skies are, you know, another one is for just materialist kind of. Skies are clear, the air is less pollution, oh, right. all of this kind Because oh, the one I read about was that we're all going through a kind of a trauma, basically, mm. you know, in the proper sense of the word, rather than like you've been through an accident or that you've laid waste to a, a village in Saigon, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's not yeah, a PTSD yeah. kind of thing, but it's that yeah, we're all like, going through this thing that we don't know about. So our subconscious has to work on this thing, like, because it doesn't know either what, what the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. is. But there's the thing that Aga was telling me today is that... Um, because uh, so many, all of us are in this new situation and we're all learning like new things. So say, for example, loads of people are learning to bake bread or, or they're just trying new recipes. But also even as simple as like, well, we're learning how to deal with, an, with a new situation. So apparently learning something when you're under stress uh, is massively good for uh, self-development. Oh, cool. You know, cool. so yeah. yeah, so I thought that was good. So maybe that's why... The Irish are so smart. We've all been through Christian Brothers schools where every second kid was abused <laughs> and through these traumatic... If he was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher's page. <laughs> <laughs> and because, you know, because of this then, you know, uh, we're incredibly intelligent. And I see the Brits are looking for our blood as well. I, I oh, are To bring back to, to blood that's, donation. That's, that's uh, not a new scenario. However. No, that's exactly, that's what the meme was. There was a meme going around saying the Brits are at it again. They're after our blood because the Irish have a high uh, percentage of a blood of one of the rarer blood types. 
that oh, they're right, looking right, for right. in a hospital. So they're putting out things on like, um, uh, what they call it, Irish um, groups in Britain and stuff like that and, 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 and looking for, for Irish people to give. And the Irish are just like... Pfft. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fairness, though, You've we taken have a big, enough over the years. <laughs> a big blood drive in uh, already here where I live, and it's like a constant. It's been open since the whole thing, and it's like uh, always loads of cars around. So I'm sure that's a good. Oh, good. Um, what's the word they're saying? Where they're uh, <laughs> cluster? I'm sure there's a good cluster of uh, Corona coming out of it. The one thing I find really interesting about the, the kind of conspiracy things is this Bill Gates thing, and uh, I was just like, it's I've I'm not a fan of Bill Gates or a defender or anything but it's kind of it's a it's a good kind of telling of how the conspiracy kind of mind works in that oh, Bill Gates is he not a computer guy what's he got to do with pandemics there's obviously some sort of huge conspiracy he wants to take over the world and some goes yeah well actually he's been into pandemic stuff for a number of years now and uh, this is the thing he kind of did when he left uh you know, Microsoft, oh, he's been planning this for years, has he? He's been doing this. And he, oh, he, he predicted that this will happen, so he definitely did it. And you're kind of going, there's just no, it's circular thought. There's no way out of it, no yeah, matter what yeah, happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's cons yeah. There's conspiracy. And it's that video I did during the week, I was going to like, ask the question, is it possible if you have a conspiratorial mind to ever see anything as a good thing? Or are you just going to naturally just see even good news as it was already planned? You know, in that David Icke thing of it's... Um, I can never remember a thing. It's like problem, reaction, solution. That's yeah, it. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So the solution you always see, the good news has always been orchestrated for a bad reason. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah, that's yeah. a horrible way to look at it. Yeah, it may be true. <laughs> I suppose. I don't, but like, yeah. See, I, I'm not mad about about these types of conspiracy ones. I'm more into the aliens and the kind of Mothman's that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. Even though is is Mothman really conspiracy? Well, I suppose the cover. It, if it's a cover-up, that's a conspiracy. I think what we're into is Fortean rather than conspiracy. Okay. You know, that kind of um, aliens, mod man's weirdness stuff, not necessarily a touch of JFK, but like kind of not really <laughs> New World Order, not kind of, um, you know, Clintons, you know, that, that kind of... So, well, I, I can't speak for you. I think that's where I'm coming from. It's more, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I love a bit of, you know... Uh, Perhaps there used to be a life on Mars or Venus or something like that. Mm. But mm. I think I like the churchy a, ones a, as well. The well I like ones? the churchy. I, I like the churchy ones as well. I find like them what? interesting because that's just you know the, the years of the Catholic Church hiding stuff. Even like oh, the yeah, whole yeah. Jesus and Jesus bloodline and all that kind of yeah. stuff. You know, I don't know if it's true, but I mean, if it is true, then it's kind of cool that like the, you know, the King of France was like a great 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 grandson of, of Jesus. That's yeah. mad if it did happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, what the fuck? Well, why France? You know, this is this whole thing, like, I, like the Irish stuff comes up in this as well, how how the Irish language is connected to these kind of Asian languages that it has no fucking right to be connected to at all. Do you right, know? right, right. There's loads yeah. of, there's, there's someone, I, I saw something recently, someone sent it to me, maybe someone sent it to me. Um, all of these words that are similar in Turkish to Irish like, oh, like right. the moral is exactly the fucking same. Like, you know, like the word for boat in boat languages. And it's like, how? Like, and so someone else was explaining, it was Reddit, that's what it was. Someone else was explaining that, well, it could have a common root through this, 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 this. But, like, it's, it's mind Weird. blowing that it's possible, right, yeah. you know? So, like, I, mean, I, assume, like, I assume Irish then is, hasn't a Latin base then. No, it's not the same as the other Indo European uh, languages, I suppose. It, 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 the Latin has come into it because right. of the, the Christianity influence, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like there's, you know, there's cons not conspiracies, but there's kind of links between like the Irish and the Sumerians and all that kind of stuff, and how like apparently there's a, a one of the some pharaoh's daughter, or or she was a queen of Egypt. She she's buried in Kerry. Oh right, and, and okay. there is there's, there's there's a headstone in the uh, land of uh, Mumu. <laughs> yeah, the land of Mumu. Yeah, that's what the Vikings used to call monster Mumu. Isn't that mad? That's crazy. Synchronicities yeah. everywhere. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, and yeah, it's very strange. But I, 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 I like all that stuff. Like I like, and 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 the thing about like New Grange is different than a lot of like the temples where like the Mexicans and the Aztecs. And the Mayans were well, not Mexicans. The Aztecs and the, and the Mayans, their temples were pointed at um, uh, Orion's belt. But yeah, Newgrange yeah. and stuff of that kind of Neolithic period, some of it's also at um, Orion's belt. But apparently Newgrange and the Irish Druids had something about Sirius. And oh, Sirius, right. 
Sirius is supposed to be where the good aliens come from, and Orion is where the bad aliens come from, and bam, 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 bam they all have a big fight on Earth. Uh, did that think that's just the Irish being contrarian? No. I think it's good crack, though, you know? I, I think oh, it's good oh, crack, oh, Orion is it? All oh, right, yeah, right. <laughs> well, fuck you and your Orion. You see <laughs> yeah. that one there? You see the swan? Yeah. I'm going to be yeah. a swan. Yeah. Because fuck Sirius you. Sirius is the, it's the dog stars, and so like, it's just to Sorry, be like a mo- the dog mo- one. We like our, uh, our madras. <laughs> madras, yeah, yeah. See, I'm thinking of Signet. Signet is yeah. the swan, isn't it? the Cygnus yeah yeah, yeah 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 now I like all that stuff because you know deep space is just like we're never going to know you know but like with pizza not with that just... attitude <laughs> <laughs> no true yeah but like the whole pizza gay thing it's just like uh whatever yeah what know. I see I love about conspiracies and this kind of stuff or whatever it is 14 whatever it is I like about it because it, I find that it blows my mind and it like it, it, it makes me think about things oh I never would have thought about that even if it's true or not but I find yeah. an awful lot of the more political conspiracies are more contracting and fear based and it's it kind of gives me the opposite brain buzz that yeah, I, yeah. I'm looking for from it's like it. the whole like flat earth like if, if you peel back a couple of pages on flat earth it's basically just um, what do you call it Christian fundamentalist fundamentalism. Christians yeah, absolutely. that's it yeah. yeah that's all it is and you're just like oh well, that's a let down yeah which <laughs> you know? like there's so much of that though because I just messaged you during the week about it so just saying that when you look at conspiracy in the kind of say political conspiracy but it does it that's it's more than just politics yeah. but it's just fundamentally Christians afraid of the yeah. devil yeah, at the end yeah, of it yeah. and it's very disappointing like there's nothing worse than when you get to the end of Flat Earth and go uh, yeah because God loves us and they don't want us to know and you go oh, really oh no oh no <laughs> I mean yeah I mean I, my idea of God is that he's far sounder than that you know what I mean yeah, he's yeah. not gonna it's oh not, it's not it's that just... God isn't sound God's totally sound it's them they don't want you to know that God is totally sound yeah but if God was God because he'd not just tell us that he's totally sound just you know yeah. Then it just explained it. It's all very weird, you know. But I mean, do like, um, yeah, sorry, go on. No, that was the subject it, completely now. Um, uh, <laughs> or a mud flood. Or... Up, that that the kid, Tar- Tartania, Tartaria came up on David McWilliams' podcast. He's getting oh, more oh, yeah. woo, man. He's getting more and more woo the whole time. We'll an episode next week on Servitors. <laughs> <laughs> How the European Central Bank is run by servitors. And I found these cards called the 40 Servants. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's changed my is... whole approach to life. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to change it completely because um, I wanted to ask you about a video you did. Yes. Uh, you were talking about uh, banishing. You were going to do some banishing in, in, yeah, your, yeah, yeah. in your office and that. But um, also there's a post on your, on, your, on your blog from, I don't know, a good few years ago where you were talking about banishing and you were using a uh, sage and stuff like that. So, yeah. like, uh, this is the question and kind of... And, <laughs> what and the of course, fuck you at no, there, no, Tommy? What's no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck you doing, Tommy? <laughs> no, but there's, um, because of that book that we bought, read this, uh, Stealing the Fire from Hell. Uh, yeah. we, I Heaven. was telling you a bit about it last week and we, we bought read yeah. it now. Yeah. Um, that goes mad after yeah, page 30. Yeah, it goes mad. Like, you know, <laughs> anyway, we'll come to that. <laughs> um, uh, because he, they, they, he, he speaks about a banishing thing, which is very, very simple. Basically, you kind of just imagine that you're in a protective bubble and yeah. you expel bad thoughts, bad energies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, so what's, and that's what's the difference, but what's the evolution then of what you were doing a few years ago of the sage and the prayer and the e- evocation is yeah. so to I think what you were talking about in the video yeah. the other so day. I think that the kind of when you get into magic and you get into the, it's, this whole thing of banishing is, is hit. You're hit with it really, really quick. There'll just be something yeah. you should do all the time, all the thing. And so most people, you know, take that advice. And the, the, the big, most famous kind of banishing ritual is this lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, which comes from the Golden Dawn um, school of thought, which was right. late 19th century, early 20th century, English, basically Kabbalah-esque society that's... Uh, uh, Yates was in. Yeah, um, yeah Crowley was in. Yeah. All yeah. of these kind of Yates hated Crowley. By the way, hated him. Couldn't have him at all. Thought he was a bad influence. Right. Um, and Crowley thought Yates was uh, desperately boring. So there you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> well, kind of have to go with Crowley on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and so look, the whole idea of the lesser banishing ritual is because you're, you're basing it, you're putting yourself at the centre of the universe, and then you're clearing your area, and then you're invoking the guardian or the archangels, whatever way you want to look at it, around you. 
which is like the element so earth wind air and earth wind air earth wind fire moto um, captain planet okay that's it hot and uh so uh <laughs> using kind of um uh it's a jewish language i suppose a kabbalic kabbalistic language and stuff like that and the whole idea is to do it every day and you clear your area of course, the original thing was that you did it twice a day. One is an invoking and one is a banishing. So you in, took in the energy and then you let it go. And it was called the lesser ritual of the pentagram, mostly by the Golden Dawn. And this banishing bit, while it was in it, is a, a kind of a more modern take on it. Even though it's in it, it was more, like it's overemphasized, in my okay. opinion. But what happens, though, is that you tend to, uh, if you start doing these banishing things, if we were to believe the work, and I did it, it every day for months, is that it's it's a bit like chemotherapy and it gets rid of everything. So if you're just constantly banishing, then you're getting rid of everything around and you hear an awful lot of people say, you know, I've lost my job, my, my money streams ended up coming out of relationships and all of that. One way to look at it is, is you're banishing the good with the bad. Or another way you can kind of look at it is that the things that you accepted as good mightn't be as good as you thought and you need to get rid of certain relationships and all of that. Yeah. Now, you could take whatever you want from why that works, be it just intention or wh whether it's actual, um, you know, the actual rit ritualistic behavior that you're doing, the actual movements or the, you know, the power words and all that, whether they have an effect. It's up to you to decide what's th uh, on that. But apart from the whole kind of you're banishing everything, say the chemotherapy version of, of banishing, there's also a thing that there's a, a, an idea that you light yourself up on the astral plane in that you make yourself seen and so that then attracts the bad, the bad dudes, you know, the, the dark dudes, because they're attracted, you know, obviously the dark, it's attracted to the lights. So it can also have it, <laughs> the opposite um, kind of thing from what you want in that while you're clearing your area, you're more visible for more further attacks. Other opinions are available on that. Have, read that, that up yourself. So I kind of did that and I found out things were getting a bit strange and stuff like that. And I didn't like the kind of effect it was. Um, so I thought I'd just have a more chaos magic kind of approach to it. And... It, that down to even like the smudging thing, which is the sage and the Palo Santo, is that's an old Native American thing that they did, and you know, of course, we've stolen that and <laughs> decided that it's now and a white person's land. thing, yeah. and all and, and older sage, and now it's an endangered thing, all of that thing. It says we'll have that and everything else, um, but it turns out it has some antibacterial, antifungal, yeah. or antiviral. One of them, I'm not sure yeah, which yeah, one. Yeah, so yeah, there was a, a practical yeah. use to it as well. <clears throat> it's not, you know, if you go around a. a COVID-19 ward it's not going to get you know it's not it's not in the same way tea tree yeah, yeah. is antiviral antifungal antibacterial and the other one it's the only one that has yeah, yeah it's the same as a, like a dog saliva isn't it yeah but like I mean, we're not harvesting dog saliva <laughs> no, yet no, thank yeah, fuck no. yeah. <laughs> but I mean it's good and it, like when we have the tea tree boring all the time when the preschool's on and it definitely has an effect but if someone comes in with you know corona we're all going to get corona that's it it's, yeah. stuff, but it, it's, it's a good <laughs> it's like putting on a jumper because it's cold um, it's great. Putting on a jumper when you're in the Arctic Circle, not as great. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's not good to put on jumpers. <laughs> um, so I just kind of more uh, discovered that the, the kind of feeling that I was looking for from a banishment point of view was that kind of feeling you have after you've cleaned your office or cleaned your bedroom or tidied your thing. And just kind of, it seems to clear your, your space as well. But I mean, there's loads of studies done into that in a, a very, you know, mundane, psycho psychological way that having a, you know, a, a table or something that's a mess, you know, it means that your work kind of mind is a bit messy too. And, you know, the yeah, inside, that's like, yeah, fucking that's... Einstein, though. <laughs> what did Einstein say? The show a person, oh no, someone said to Einstein, uh, ah, a messy, a messy desk is a, is a messy, is a messy mind. And then Einstein said, well, what about an empty, what, what's a, what the fuck is an empty what's desk? What's an empty desk? Yeah, well, that's together you go. I suppose, you know? like, yeah, that's tr true. Um, my desk is definitely. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> uh, look, I, man, I have three or four desks around this house that I kind of station myself at, and they're all just mm, chaos. But that's the way I like it. I know where everything is. Yeah, well, that's it. And there's nothing worse than your wife cleaning stuff or organising stuff, and you go, where is everything? I don't know where everything is. Just, <laughs> just leave, me, leave everything. I, I don't touch anything. Well, I don't um, know if my wife is too lazy to do that or just the perfect woman and just leaves my stuff as it is. <laughs> take take what you get. <laughs> Whatever it is. Whatever's the reason. I uh, know. She's great. Um, so, yeah. So then the banishing thing, I, I kind of then extended that to being that I have a mostly psychological 
uh, model of magic that well in a consciousness model of magic rather than psychological that how does that then approach to things like social media news and um, people around you and allowing other people's <clears throat> thoughts ideas to affect you and you know and it's like an awful lot of then going into even things like when you're doing the therapy and stuff like that you realize just how in a sense you're being played by other people in different ways and yeah, how, yeah, yeah. you know the little, little tricks and stuff so banishing would then would be to kind of make a ritualistic approach to acknowledging that and removing it so if to me a banishing of where you sweep your floor and i like adding in wee woo bits where i like use oils and stuff like that because i enjoy it and it makes me feel magically and wizardy and it, you know great um, and it also has that benefit of it probably you know kills a few germs or whatever too but i feel doing something like that is more or as least equal beneficial to doing less banishing uh, ritual of the pentagram as is going through your social media your twitter and mutant trump or whatever word is annoying <laughs> you. or if you're going through facebook and unfollowing your friends and family who do you don't want to make a big deal about by unfriending just unfollow them no one knows no one cares and that's kind of out or is the thing you say that if you have to meet your friend on a friday and you're worried about it or it's annoying you just don't meet him anymore <laughs> you yeah, know, that's, yeah he's not your friend, yeah and so from the whole kind of uh <clears throat> Kind of elaborate, and like the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram isn't even that most the, most the most elaborate kind of ritual you can do. There's a hexagram hexagram ritual. I actually like Crowley's version, the Star Ruby, a bit more. It's a bit more theatrical. You get to shout it in the different uh, and then whisper and stuff. It's kind of a bit more theatre to it. But it's not so good when you know you live in the house with other people. I suppose. <laughs> but isn't it all? It does all come down to really like how you. Uh... How to kind of convince yourself that what you're doing is magic? Is that is that right? Am I phrasing that properly? I, I, yeah, I, I think so. I, I certainly, but there like there's a whole lot of people who think you're having actual, you're making some sort of impression, you know, more than just that. And I don't discount it. I but I don't rely it, rely on it, or need it to be true to get yeah. the effect I'm looking for. But like, but if it, the whole know, if the whole chaos magic then is to kind of boil everything down to its essence. Then, like, just by picking up your sweeping brush and saying, "Right, I'm banishing stuff with this," then that that's that's enough. Then, if well, if you tell yourself that's enough, that's enough. Am yeah, I, right? I told you that yes, and hence why the broom is you know so associated with magic. Like, I know there was other uses, yeah. but it's like you know why is the the, the thing when we think of witches, the, one of the very first thing is a cleaning instrument. Um, but conversely, the kind she's of a woman, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing out of the kitchen, flying up and up near the moon? Kill What's the patriarchy. <laughs> Um, but like then you have the idea that um, if you have to go to the trouble of creating an energy ball around you, then that says a lot about your state of mind to begin with, that you think you need that type of protection. And therefore you're coming from a weak place too. So there's like, you know, there's, you, can, you can't win overall. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, no, no I get you. Because like, like your man, like that book, the Stealing the Fire from, from Heaven, like yeah. the first couple of pages, he's like, well, look, this is psychotechnology really. It's just getting yourself into the... Uh, getting you in tune with your subconscious so you can do this, 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 this. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 35 no. pages later... No, drink your own cum. <laughs> <laughs> 35 pages later, he's teaching you the Alistair Crowley summoning demon or summoning yeah. angels techniques. Yeah. And you're like, wow, where did, yeah. how did, did, <laughs> how did he get there so quickly? Yeah. You know? And so <laughs> casually, and so it just, it just naturally just seems... Yeah, and it's like, and it's like, well, there's no dogma in this book at all. I didn't, hold on now whoa <laughs> I, mm, excuse me sir 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 excuse me sir 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 sir, sir. hello hello you're not like, ah, nah, I always used to get ignored in, in school yeah <laughs> but it's an, it's an interesting one that book and I really enjoyed it and it's grand because it's so, uh, so small too that you can you know you could give it to someone and they could read it in a few days and stuff but it does kind of jump very much from you know, uh, oh, this kind of psychological model to yes, I know. Drink your own cum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it. A, I'm calling it a Eucharist from now on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's like um, uh, you know, it's yeah, funny. it's uh, interesting. <laughs> How did you, you you react to like when you like did you kind of go oh well, hold on this is this is going a bit well, much for me? Okay, yeah. I'm totally honest. Now I like the stuff about um, Mr. Spare. Osmond Spare, yeah? Yeah. I thought yeah, all yeah. that stuff was fascinating. Uh, I want to look more into him because I think if he's someone that Chaos Magic is based on, 
a, a lot of it is based, on, especially yeah. sigils and stuff. Okay, so then I want kind, I kind of want to look in a bit more to his life because if he's the guy who kind of invented the sigils that we're all using and stuff. How successful was he really if he was living in well, dungeons? He was, and... uh, yeah, well, he was a very <laughs> successful artist, but like it's it's um, maybe not the most successful um, financial organizer, perhaps. But he did. Like, yeah, it, so was, like, it was, but I, it I, seems to be a bit of a choice with him because he was offered loads of money for everything. Yeah, yeah, I you know, think so. so. Yeah, I think yeah. he wanted to to be a, to live the proper artist life yeah, and live in a yeah. shit hole among scumbags and still yeah, find yeah. the the beauty in in the and he did the automatic drawing and automatic writing that seems to be where it came from and there probably people doing it before that but anyway um yeah so I'll 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 have a I'll have a gander at his books I have a good um, biography of his I'll, I'll, yeah uh, by Kenneth same. someone isn't it no it's not the Kenneth Grant one no that, that's that's <laughs> Kenneth Grant uh, has a uh, his own opinions on people that may or may not be true, <laughs> but he likes okay. to kind of to increase the legend of things and stuff. But oh, he, you okay. know, okay, okay, uh, oh, because I I had read that that one is supposed to be good, but so that's the one I got. Like I haven't read that one, but okay. I have another one. But um, ah, I'll, I'll send it. It's on, yeah. it's on the list that I get there. But so I liked all the spare stuff, and then the the Crowley stuff. I was like, ooh, it's a bit 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 of a bit of a step for me now, you know, because yeah. because how to explain it, um. Because it goes it's, into it's actual like, no, magic. No, like, no but it's, it's like it's like what I say to you. It's, oh, it's that like what I say to you is that like you know this kind of thing of you know having a bottle of whiskey and a packet of fags with pan. You know yeah, that's yeah, chaos yeah. magic. Just saying, right, pan, let's fucking do it. You know, and whether it's in my mind or he actually comes down, and she'll, let's just fucking find out. So yeah. the whole thing of 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 Crowley uh, using these uh, names for the different entities who are kind of same three or four entities anyway but using all these ancient and different names for them to try and grab them and I don't see the point yeah and I mean like that, know, the whole, that whole ritual just, that's I just what it comes down the, to um, the headless ritual or the boreless ritual depending on um, what way you look at or what, what uh, kind of aspect or what you know the barbers names uh, that it talks yeah. about at the end that whole that yeah. whole thing Um some people have got massive uh, kind of effect from doing that. And I've done it a number of times and I haven't. That's all I can say. Um, and but and there's Gordon White talks about he has a, his own version of it where you align yourself with uh, oh, the Orion's belt, Osiris, whatever that is, and then uh, invoke the four kings of hell. And I, it, didn't, it didn't do anything for me at all. But I do know people who ha have had... What the fuck are you going to ask the four kings of hell? Whatever you want, what do you want? What well, what can you do? But it's originally is it's an exorcism that that thing. That's uh -huh. it. it's, it's kind of so it's a banishing ritual in a sense. It's about removing um, influences from you and becoming, in a sense, invoking, you know, the headless, you know, the headless pairs, that the unborn, the primordial, the chaos, that, that okay, kind of thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. the thing before mm -hmm. it all. So within, if you take if you take it as purely, say, from like an Anton Levey. Uh, a psychodrama type thing that you first get rid of everything you you know you say say what you want and then you take all of the primordial energy all of the thing the unborn the potentiality this headless thing and then you become that so you transform yourself through this ritual through this play through this drama and that's the idea and from that place then do you know nice. then go into the world okay. so but if you're kind of thinking of actually <clears throat> I don't know from what, the way you were saying it. Kind of, what's the point? Well, there is no point. But if you're doing it to build up a power, to build up an inner thing, to change your mind, to change your appreciation, your consciousness, all of that to affect then reality, then that's a, there's a point to that. But you can do that any amount of ways. This just has seemed to have yeah, worked yeah, yeah, for yeah, more yeah, people. Yeah. Well, 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 that, well that's, that's what I mean. It's kind of like well, okay, so Cro Crowley had his way of doing it and had all these invocations and names and all like that. But I presume, I mean, what the fuck is stopping me and you and anyone else? And fucking Ned down the road in his bicycle shop from doing it completely differently and getting the same result. Like, there's no. Well, what, what, what the answer is that um, is that these are the names that have been used for centuries and are more powerful because of it. Or, or some people say are actual names of beings, of ideas, or of actual demons, whatever kind of thing you want to have of it. So that the idea being that if you pray to Apollo rather than Superman, that you should get more of an effect because Apollo was closer to the actual thing. Than Superman, mm. but it like you know, whatever. I'm 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 not sure I subscribe to that, but that's yeah, that's the yeah, answer. I, yeah. yeah, 
I'm not convinced yet. But like, I'm not. Like, I'm not. I'm not. And the also, just, just point that that's not Crowley's ritual. It's like, it comes from the PGM, which is the Greco Egyptian, um, right stuff, which comes from Alexandria. Blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. So it's okay. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm not. I mean, I wouldn't really be convinced by it either. But like, I mean, there's stuff like the astral projection stuff. That's fucking pretty cool, man. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. I want to. I, I want to take some ayahuasca and try that shit. Like, <laughs> you know, fuck that, the yeah, idea man. of um, the night or night or is that or is it, yeah, yeah, the night yeah, or, yeah, yeah, where everything is that everything that is true has an equal but opposite truth somewhere yeah, yeah, in yeah. the thing, and you but have to find the, it to cancel out. That's brilliant. What do you call it? That's uh, what's that called? That's in Kabbalah. That's the is it duality or or polar, polarity? Polarity. Yeah. Polarity. Yeah, yeah. The, polarity. The kind of, but yeah. So that comes from that. But then also, but like also, that's something in, in reality trans. Like reading this 120 page thing, I kind of saw like how much reality transfer from comes from this stuff as well. Yeah. And then that comes from Kabbalah and that comes and from hermetism. Colors. And, yeah, the Madly. hermetism stuff. Yeah, so yeah. No, it's all but just it's, people it's, kind of yeah. rewriting what's been done before, like, isn't it? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And get, yeah. you know, changing the language for the different age that they're writing in and putting their yeah. own little kind of spin on it. Because it's like, it's hard to kind of, if, like, as you were saying, if you if you come up to someone now and go, right, here's the headless ritual, try that and, you know, shout out a few <laughs> names and, you know, talk about firmaments and all of this kind of stuff. and Or, you know, just think of something you really like, then <laughs> drop all yeah. the boards. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the yeah, pendulums. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely will, 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 will dig a bit, dig a bit more into Spare. I think he's interesting and the sigils, because like, you know, I was showing you stuff there before I came on. Like I got a little tablet over the weekend and I was practicing little sigils and mixing in different alphabets and, and, and stuff like that and trying to get cool designs. Because, like, I'm not a designer at all. I know, at it all. doesn't matter. But, you know, the whole but, like, it doesn't matter. But, like, I can is still... for you to f- find it magical. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, like, you have all these squiggly lines, which is basically what an alphabet is, and you just kind of match them up and get something cool and you spend five minutes at it and go, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Or yeah. you say, no, nah, I don't like this. And you come back tomorrow and with fresh eyes and go, ah, ah here you go. You know, yeah. it's and fucking it's, a, it's an odd one with sigils, like you sound similar to me, is that how do you know when it's done? You just know. You can just go, yeah. oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is there. Yeah. That's, That's what it was. It. That's there it. you go. Yeah. That's it. Or else, you know, you go too far and then you come back to one and you're like, mm, I, can, I can do better. I can do better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can make this more magic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My kind of but trick like, with sigils come here, okay, and traps. Did, yeah, Remember, <laughs> did you get your three Kermits? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. That was an Is interesting that... one. I'll, I'll tell you why it was an interesting one. Um, because it's the same sigil, but I, for what I, it was along the lines of what we were just saying is that I drew it and had it in my notebook where I do every, all my sigils, and then I transfer it to the card. And the first time I went, well, that's just not it. And then I tried it again and go, no, that's still not it. Um, and then the third time I go, all right, that's it. But then when I put them together, it looked like it was moving in one direction, like yeah, uh, as an arc. Yeah. And I went, oh, hold on, that's interesting. So that's what it is. <laughs> so it was all yeah, three of them. Yeah. So it was a, that was an interesting one. Is, is that a faux pas to ask someone about their sigil? Um, it can be to ask some people, yeah. But also, you're not, you know, it depends. Uh, people say you shouldn't talk about it at all. And I get that. I, I think you can. it depends. It's like, how do you know when a sigil is done? Uh, it's the same as how do you know when you can talk about a sigil? You just know. Yeah, you know, there's something. It's just kind of it, it's it's uh... because the no, it's just because. But, the, but don't that... feel under an obligation to talk about them if you don't want to. That's probably the best thing. I'm man, you know me. I don't listen to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. It's like, yeah, yeah. but like the way that Spare talks about them is that like, uh, okay, to compare it to say reality transurfing, where you think about something that you, that you want or something or a goal that you're focused on, you, you you're allowed indulge in it and think about how you're going to do it. But then you have to do the polar polarized version of it and say, well, if I don't get it, sure, my life is still okay anyway. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but then there's also the drop in importance and just kind of forgetting about it and embracing the world and the universe and it'll uh, help it manifest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Spare's idea is similar, but it's that. When it does the, come the, into your the mind, the neither neither is that it's yeah, the neither neither is mm-hmm. it's the same as dropping importance, yeah. and, and and also this polarization of okay having the total opposite of what you want happening as well. So there's that, but then there's also like like if it does come in, you know you can have there's kind of two options. You can give it a burst of power by thinking about it or by putting it out in the open. So I presume that counts by speaking about it with other people. And then there's also this thing of having his uh, the secret alphabet of 
words, Athletic desire, yeah, words yeah, yeah. which is yeah. geez, that's mad stuff as well like yeah, it's, kind of, it's interesting work, though, it? <laughs> yeah no it is a lot of work but like it's uh, no, I think it's, it's quite interesting because you know if you look at it say like someone like Tolkien and all like he 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 was mad into creating his languages and it's a similar kind of thing like, it is you know, it is it's absolutely just, absolutely it's identifying words and you know. had a great kind of thing that he said at the end of sigils or when he was doing any kind of magic was um, does not matter need not be and that was how he kind of ended it yeah. that's you know just the dropping of, of, of importance um, the way I the trick I get around to kind of lust the result or not thinking about it is I do sigils really really fast um, so I go right, I'm going to do some sigils tonight and I'll do five of them together and I'll do them bang 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 get them to the sigil as quick as possible and then I have found when I do that, I very quickly, I haven't spent enough time thinking about them for it to be in, in my memory. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, only yeah. then when I go, oh, yeah, that was what was one of the sigils. Well, it's when it happens uh-huh. that it clicks back. Okay. Now, not okay. always, because, you know, it's hard to, like, you go, how do you forget the, when you've done a sigil, you know, <laughs> to pay the mortgage tomorrow? You know, it's very hard to forget that. <laughs> so I tend to not do magic for that, you know, the emergency magic thing, unless I really need to. But for, you know, uh, kind of general enchantment and stuff like that, uh, doing them really quick. And getting them done and out of the way see, works for me. So it's worth trying if if lustre result is an issue for, you know, to try and forget about it. But also don't obsess about it if you do remember it because you can. That's equally going to drive you insane. It's like that whole thing of when you go on a diet, all you can do is think of food. If you're trying to forget <laughs> something, all you're going to do is think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're banished, well, I mean, just go... you can use you can use what what spare says. You can say right if it does come back into your mind, then give it a, a an extra burst of power by yeah. thinking about it or by associating it with one of these kind of secret alphabet and if, but if you don't have one of those secret alphabet letters just just think of it and think of, of it powerfully and then it'll recede I suppose that's okay I don't that, know yeah yeah, yeah. I'm I very think, new to all this kind of thing I have yeah. no fucking clue you know <laughs> um, what did you make of the death posture thing yeah the death posture a number of different kind of descriptions and he's not that descriptive of it in uh, of exactly how to do it so you, you hear an awful lot of different people having different ideas what the actual physical posture is but I think in essence what it is, is exert yourself to the point of, uh, you know, you can't do it, what the, to exhaustion, and then mm. pretend you're dead. <laughs> I mean, that, that's yeah. kind of, that's what I mm. seem to think it is, but there's like, people would battle you on what the actual posture is meant to look like. But I like that idea, but it's the same kind of thing of, um, similar idea, it's not the same type of thing, of any kind of activation of a sigil or magical tent where, you know, you can do it through as the, you know, the, uh, the dancing, uh, dervishes and stuff like that you know where they dance until the, the point of that and then they let it go or you can um you know do it through anger you can do it through music you can do it through you know ejaculation anything that gets you to that single pointed kind of notion of so i suppose to exhaustion and then doing the death posture it's the same pointing at that kind of gnosis which is a terrible word for it, but that kind of state of mm. what is it spare calls that he has a different word for it um that's not I gnosis remember. The vacuity is that what he called it? The, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, I prefer that word, even though I couldn't remember it. But uh, so yeah, that kind of empty-mindedness, that kind of, kind of thing, I would say is good. But also, there's, like the whole death posture thing is such a huge thing in all kind of spiritual traditions. You have it in is shamanism it, yeah? an awful lot. Oh yeah, it's like the like the whole, you know, dying. The, the, the like Jesus story, the three days. That's it. It's the death of the sh- of mm, the um, adept. You know, where you go in and you you die. You know. Uh, symbolically and then you come out as the risen you know it's that rite of passage that you know so many yeah, different kind of cultures have so it's it's all it's like well i suppose like well, the whole thing of meditation is is preparing for death too in many different ways but we're obsessed with it because it's the you mm. know the one thing that's definitely going to happen <laughs> <You're> not, <getting laughs> out of that one. not to me no <laughs> yeah. i'm not arsed dying too many things to do too many places yeah. to see i've and... done a sigil to not die <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done it so many times anyway <laughs> fucking sleep apnea <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That's it. um was there anything else from what I, I i i wanted to ask yeah the whole i don't know if i'm gonna do the whole angel thing i mean well the, the whole angel thing and this is why the reason why i sent the dark song to you because it's I, what I was reading that that is it's the Abraham Allen thing he talks about in that which is the which isn't the ritual to do in a dark song even though they call it but it's um, I know you have yeah. issues with angels but I do like the idea of uh, I find it interesting because that's the first place I have heard where it says that your guardian angel is the opposite sex to what you are in the kind of Jungian animus anima type thing and that makes sense to me because my kind of sense of if I do have a guardian angel or a spirit, whatever it is, is definitely always appeared as a, as a female. 
to me. So I thought that was interesting. But I know you kind of go, Angels. <sighs> yeah, it's a bit of a push too far for me. I mean, like, uh, I just got a flash there. Of, you remember the Muppets Christmas Carol? And there was the uh, the big, fat, jolly uh, 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 ghost of Christmas something. Oh, yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah. Christmas present, yeah. yeah. I'd like him to be my guardian angel. He seems like a good crack. A bit forgetful, well, from but... From a chaos magic point of view, you can have that. He can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. The, the one, like, I, remember, I remember when I was on to you about reality transurfing and he was talking about the guardian or, or, or the yeah, angel. Yeah. And, I, and I, so for some reason, I just got it mixed up wrong. He does say guardian, and I, I, for some reason, I write guardian angel. Yeah, and I was I was kind of thinking was it right because I have this thing you know this I have this thing for this god who's a local god to me called Radagast. It's yeah. also a local beer, and Radagast is this Slavic god of hospitality, and he's fucking bitching, man. He's awesome. He's got a little bird on his shoulder like a parrot. Arr, he's a pirate, even though Czech is <laughs> Czech Republic is landlocked and hasn't seen the sea <laughs> since the year dot. But um. He's this, uh, he's this god of, of parties and hospi- hospitalities, and he's so hospitable, he has his own boobies. Like, I mean, he's awesome, you know, <laughs> what a hero. So, yeah, like, nice I mean, if you're going to have a god, like, have him. Like, he sounds like great crack, because that's all I'm here for, shits and, gig- well, shits and giggles. Well, so why don't but, you do the Alan Moore thing of start worshipping him as your god and see what happens? I just, uh, <laughs> why not? Like, what yeah. could happen? Oh, just nothing. I don't think anything bad could happen, possibly from that. Touch, touch all the wood in the fucking place. <laughs> um, no, but, but but the whole thing about the, the angel thing, I think I think in the book, if you look at it as the psychotechnology or, or, or chaos magic thing, I think that... I think it's... Of course it's possible that there's something that is the middleman between our dimension and whatever else is out there. Yeah. Because apparently, remember this, this videos, these films we were watching, apparently they have found up to eight dimensions now. And and and, and if there's eight, yeah. that means actually there's something like 36 or 64 yeah. Yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that. I don't remember, but it's all very technical and very uh, quantum. <laughs> but like, I think it would be cool if we did have this thing, this helper, not a helper, but this something who was a kind of middleman between it or something, you know? And like, do you know what? Like, if you can get yourself into a trance and you can get talking to that person and they are someone who can give you solace or can give you help or even can just, maybe maybe even like going through therapy and, 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 and it helps you pinpoint maybe bad stuff in yourself that you haven't sure, seen before. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, man, whatever helps you. Do you know? But the other way to look at it, though, is and the way I kind of mostly look at it is kind of the master from the 40 servants. And it's not just my idea. Like I mean, it's like that the whole idea of the holy guardian angel is not necessarily um, an external being from you. Although it, you know, it's even in this idea, it could be. But it's you when you've finished being learning all the things you have to learn. It's you yourself. It's like if you were when you're sixty, and then you you come back and you talk to who you are. Yeah, now. Yeah, Think yeah, of what yeah, you yeah. would know. Now it's multiply like, it's that like by five hundred lives. It's like Bill know? and Ted at the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Sixty nine. <laughs> so like if you think of that someone who's 500 lives ahead of you and can come back and talk and then think of someone who's at the end of eternity you can come back and talk to you but he, some people then think that um, even though it is the completed you the master or the, you know you when you've got past all the shit where you've learned all the things that there's still they would still insist there seems to be an element of otherness to it as well that it's not okay. just you that that's a cool something. idea where where, yeah. where where did you come across that first is that a Buddhist thing or... um, the I don't know. I, I think it's part of the idea of what people think the Holy Guardian Angel is is a separate being, but also it has this element of the completed Jew. And it depends. I don't really know where I came from. All I know is mm. that's where it kind of stuck in my head. But the it's more helpful idea for me to think of. Yeah. Rather, because no, the whole cool, idea cause... of what the Holy Guardian Angel is that you have to surrender to it, and that's hard for us to surrender to a being that is external to us. But it's much easier when you say, "Well, I can surrender to a being that is me." <laughs> it look, just looks like more, me. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, it's um, because the whole like reincarnation is a nice thing to think about because it's like, OK, well, I mean, if I fucked up, I get another chance. But it's also horrifying in that you got to keep repeating it until you get it right. You know, Yeah, or you have one life and you just do this life over and over again until you get it right. Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's you know, I'd, I'd be OK with that at this stage. From say the, the age po- of the from the, the age of twenty two on. <laughs> yeah, it's like going to school again. That's the bit that like uh, I've gone through teenage years again. That's like, <laughs> Could you imagine? 
I'm and, all for reincarnation and if you can skip 20, uh, the first 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. How many times has Spud killed himself just so he won't have to go to school again? Oh, I came across <laughs> this thing that uh, you're going to love. It's a Saturday morning breakfast serial comic. You know that SMBC, whatever what? it's called? No. Yeah. Oh, you, you've definitely seen it. It's one of those that's memed. It's kind of like XKCD. It's like it's it doesn't look anything like XKCD, but it's, it's you know, you've seen it as often as that. But it was this idea, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of what it is, but it's the idea that if the uh, quantum theory is right and that every action opens up a new universe, uh -huh. that since the invention of the atomic bomb or the discovery, there, uh, the amount of universes where humans haven't killed themselves is exponentially getting smaller and smaller and smaller, <laughs> which means that it has to be getting, the universes that still exist have to be getting weirder and weirder and weirder because it's more unlikely for this to be true. <laughs> so it's for brilliant. every day you are in a universe that hasn't destroyed itself through atomic weapons, it's going to get weirder and weirder and weirder. That's well, awesome. Okay, okay. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I, well, I will subscribe to that newsletter and give money to their Patreon. <laughs> Sold. Yeah, sold, absolutely yeah. sold on that. It's just why is the world getting weirder? Just calm the fuck down, will you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because then then we watched them. Um, or you sent it to me? What was it called? Uh, a dark song. dark song. It's an Irish, yeah. Irish, Irish Welsh film, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Irish film paid for by the Welsh, but it was filmed mostly in Ireland and bits in Wales. But yeah, I I recognised the the lead character immediately because she was in. I don't know if you probably didn't watch them. Those um, RT did a couple of history. Uh, programs commemorating the Easter Rebellion and the Civil War, right. and she was one of the main characters. She was uh, Padraig Pierce's uh, right hand uh, lady in his uh, Irish school. She was oh, kick right, ass, okay. man. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Right, she right. was she was great in it. Yeah, she killed loads of people, and she was <laughs> nice, proper. <laughs> no, but well, she was a bit culty though towards Padraig Pierce. But most, I suppose a lot oh, of people like were like most of Ireland. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah, do you know he had a gammy eye? Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, that's why. Uh, what do what they call this look? That's portrait. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. What's that? That's profile, yeah. Profile, yeah, yeah. So you'll always great, see profile. great for radio. This. <laughs> yeah, I have no fucking clue. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. So uh, the photo or pictures of him are always profiled because he had a lazy eye and he was very. Um, uh, Is that why you only the see the, the death didn't mask from one side? <laughs> no, no, he didn't want people to know because he wanted to show himself as this perfect son of Aaron and yada yada yada. Apparently, he was a um, he had a thing for a uh, ladies' uh, uh, underwear and clothes as well. Ah, huh, sure, why not? Maybe, you know, yeah, whatever you're into. <laughs> uh, yeah, how, what, what are we talking about? Dark song, yeah. Dark so you song, sent me yeah. the, the dark song to watch, and I'm kind of glad I read the steel and the fire from heaven before I watched this. Because if yes, I watch yeah, yeah. this, there's no fucking way I would ever have read that book. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. It freaked the fucking shit out of me. It's, so it's a creepy it, film, isn't it? It's like a, it is yeah, a genuinely yeah, yeah. creepy film. Like, I'm glad film. I watched it with my lights on and my mammy was in the room as well, like beside me. <laughs> the bit, the masturbation, um, the masturbation scene was a bit awkward, but you know, know whatever. It. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. she's seen worse. The, yeah, it's not the first time you've had to watch a, a, an open <laughs> sex scene with your mammy in the room. I'm sure. The staple of Irish homes. <laughs> the, the, um, nearly 40 years of age and still getting embarrassed when there's sex on the telly. Like, what the fuck is wrong with us? But there's some uh, great bits in it. Like overall, like I mean, I like how it treats the occult as not, um, you know, it's a pro occult movie in a sense. Like it's, it takes it seriously. It doesn't make a laugh, but it doesn't. It's not stupid with it. It like kind of um, goes, you know, this is really dangerous, you know, and you shouldn't be fucking around with this type of stuff. And then spoilers, just you know, going to spoiler. The the one of my favorite bits of any film is that black shadow dude sitting on the seat smoking the fag at the near yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Oh my great. god. <laughs> Or um, her, her son's voice the other side of the door. Yeah, it, oh, that's horrible. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's there's mad. so many so, good scenes in it. Like, um, the actual climax of the film. You want to tell the story time. of it? I mean, we've ruined it already. May as well. Uh, yeah, tell the story of it. Yeah, go on. I, know, I, I, I just kind of fuck. assume everyone has seen it, but that's that's not fair. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so uh, this uh, lady gets in touch with this uh, chap from London, and she wants to do an occult ceremony because she wants. Um, what does she say she wants at the start? She says she wants love, isn't that um, it? I see. I see. I know what the twist is. So I don't. The, or not the twist. I know what it is in the end. She wants something that's fairly innocuous and okay to want. Yeah, something like love. And your man is like, ah, fuck this. This is bullshit. You I'll just say want goodbye to her son love. or something. Isn't Join a fucking like dating website. You'd be grand yeah, yeah. kind of thing. And he's like, get me the fuck out of here. I want my money. Eight hundred quid or something. Yeah. And then she says, no, actually, okay, I, it's, I'm not doing this for love. It comes out then. I'm doing it for vengeance. And then he freaks out 
because they've been doing the ser- they've already started the ceremony and it's taken a few weeks and he's like you can't fuck with the fucking gods what the fuck ah, ah, <laughs> we have to start all this again and nah, nah, nah. and then he finds out that there's it wasn't for it was for something else she wanted and then he has to he has to kill her he drowns her and then <laughs> bring her back to life and then and she's yeah, happy no, about that you know she yeah, yeah, she, she's, told, she's totally anything. fine about that yeah, she, and then he stabs himself and this is the the payback for what he had done I like that that's a cool yeah. idea because a lot of that comes up in Spears book as well it's that like whatever okay, you want yeah. something like you have to kind of there is some sort of a sacrifice or whatever um, yeah and then and then she meets the angel at the end which is mad <laughs> and that's then, a really like uh, the, the, the angel kind of scene is I think it's done really really well like it kind of impresses on you the magnificent sort of uh, the uh, awesomeness in the true sense of the word that it must be if you did manage to see an angel like and you know <laughs> worry your fucking kick-ass dude like told you that better teeth though oh you're never happy <laughs> <laughs> never happy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then and then it, it turns around then and, and and she asks for something else but like yeah it's i mean it still has a bit of the hero's journey in it too because the hero's journey I'm, you have to lose a limb she loses the finger and stuff like that uh, that's yeah, yeah that's right yeah. Yeah. yeah i didn't pick up on that well done Fucking <laughs> culture studies, huh? Um, no, I mean, it's, okay, the first thing I have to do with a film like this is I have to park my brain, not somewhere else, because you still have to think, but it's kind of just say, right, because like when I'm, when, when I'm watching something, like I always fall into the trap of what, what would I do? And if I wanted to do what she was going to do, the last fucking person I'd call is some occultist who's going to make me go through fucking six or eight weeks of absolute torture just go on the dark web and buy a gun. Do <laughs> you know? She wants revenge because someone, um, her kids, her kid was kidnapped and they never found him. So she's like, yeah, I want, I want to fuck up these cunts that, that took my boy. Like, Yeah, but like, so if you bought a gun, how would you do it? Because you don't know who did it. So that's, how that's would I do what? How would you get your revenge if you don't know who is the people responsible? Ah, you'd, you'd find them. Of course you'd find them. <laughs> No, it's fine. I thought that was the whole point that she couldn't find. Is that not maybe I'm misremembering? No, that, the this... police couldn't find him. There was nothing about her not finding him. I don't. I don't oh, think right, she bothered okay. Tommy. Oh, right. To be honest now, I don't think she was. Straight I think to the magic. Straight I think magic. she just wanted to have. She had heard what it was. Was she bought the forty servants a couple of years ago, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then she got pulled into the occult <laughs> through her friendness for her friendship with Tommy Kelly. <laughs> Next thing you know, <laughs> she's trying to kill people with angels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just foreshadowing my fucking eventual downfall and I'll be talking, oh Jesus I'll be meeting angels this time next week so uh, Crowley oh. did that uh, ritual or the real the actual Abram Allen ritual is quite boring and involves a lot of kind of bowing and getting up at sunrise it's not quite as uh, intense or elaborate as the one in the film but Crowley did it so it's meant to be a year and a half long depending oh. on the source you read but he never finished it he, he gave up and a lot of people blame his misfortune later in life. Again, that depends on who you ask whether he had misfortune, but a lot of uh, stuff that happened to him on the fact that he stopped, he didn't finish, uh, complete the right. But he did uh, get in contact with his holy guardian angel uh, uh, who wrote the Book of the Law, 1904, which was the uh, last week, was the anniversary of that. Over three days. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, eight, nine, um, ten. Yeah, it's, um, but it's, I mean, it's a good, I still like the film though. It's very good because mm. it's it's just it's 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 like a two person play. There's only two actors yeah, and a couple yeah, of ghosts. That kind of, That's yeah. it, like in this cool yeah. cool old house, and yeah, I enjoyed um, it better the second time I watched it. The first time I found yeah. the ending, I just the ending I was kind of go. You know, I was just like, uh, I was like, and then the second I went, no, that is that is the end. Yeah, there's no one going to come looking for your man. You know, he's just floats off, and that's it, like, okay. Well, you see, the thing is, you have to remember, like, that she, like totally <laughs> spoiling, sorry, everyone, but he, he ends up in a lake, right? But that lake is foreshadowed the whole way through the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you see it all the time. So, I mean, there's, it's as, it, they've talked about sacrifice and stuff like that. That's the sacrifice of nature. Yeah. Uh, needed for this thing. So, is anyone going to come? No, like, and, because that's the completed ritual that's the yeah, 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 yeah. all part of the whole thing do you know what the, the only thing I would have changed with it is that if, I think if I'd have made it I'd have, I'd have said it like a hundred years ago and just made it creepier do you know just I, know, I think I, yeah no I understand that but I think the, the fact that you can make it creepy in a world set in a world that doesn't believe yeah, well, in magic yeah well that's a good point is, actually you know yeah, rather yeah. in a world that does believe in magic you know where the yeah. rules would be different I think it, it's see a good, I, kind of... I, I, I had been expecting the kind of an exorcism type movie because the exorcism is like it's it's 
the best suspense film ever probably made like you know it's just builds builds slowly 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 I thought it was going to be (laughs) be I thought it was going to be a bit more like that you know and uh, I remember one night I getting stoned with with an old girlfriend and like crying on the couch begging her to turn it off like (laughs) crying in floods like I just couldn't take it like it was not 32, 33. Yeah, it was, it was, it was last week. <laughs> I know, I would have been in my 20s. Um, it was an awful fella for getting stoned and watching horror horror films and oh, freaking myself. Idea. Why, do I, why did I used to do that? And now I'm bald as a coot. That's stressful. <laughs> but like, <laughs> um, no, no, no. I, I think it's a really interesting film and I think they are respectful of this dark occult kind of stuff, I suppose. I think so, I think so, yeah. I think it's, a, it's one of the more fairer representations within within fiction. Like, I mean, it's it's obviously not real. Like, it's a, you know, yeah. and you take great like liberties. In, in but I think the spirit of it, though. In your experience, Tommy, of, you know, knowing people who are into magic and stuff, like, how, like, do a lot of people get sucked into the dark stuff? or Oh, yeah, yeah Or yeah. do they just go in wanting to know it, like? No, an awful lot of people get into magic to, you know, because they got fucked up by someone and they want fuck them up equally like that's a huge really yeah. oh yeah 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 massively that and can i get back with my girlfriend boyfriend other yeah are the two major reasons people uh get into magic which close behind it will be i need money but mostly it's yeah um how do i fuck this bitch up <laughs> really <Right>. like, <laughs> so you're saying i am pure basically um I, i'd say you might have uh, pure <laughs> intentions but may have been um you know somewhat uh Dirtied maybe by an influence. <laughs> <laughs> You're not as pristine as you once were. Yeah, no, it's uh Yeah. I hope I don't go all Anakin Skywalker on you. you know? <laughs> I have to hire grand Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> um no, I mean yeah, it's a good it's a good film. I know we've spoiled it for you now, but it is for any, anyone. Well, it's what's it's two thousand and sixty four year old. I think yeah. well, fair enough to let talk about it. Yeah, um, yeah I really enjoyed. It. I like the whole thing. I, I extra like that it's uh, was filmed in Ireland, even though it's set in in Wales. But uh, I, t- I think it's it's if you're into magic in any sort of way, you should definitely watch it. Like the, the spirit of it's there and all that. But it could probably, it probably still could add to the kind of. Um, Oh, you know, the whole thing of, oh, magic is Satan's work and that you, you kind of still have the stigma of kind of, you know, satanic stuff. Because, well, I mean, maybe that's okay too. Maybe, yeah, but you know, they're not, they're it should she, stop. They're, they're, like, yeah, well, yeah, well, I mean, th- there is that weird thing that, like, she knows, she knows she's trying to talk to an angel. Uh, she's trying to contact an angel to, to ask for something, but she lies to him about what she wants. So she's not going in with pure intentions. So things go a bit wrong. Yeah, and that, yeah. that I know just from my little knowledge of reading a couple of books about this, I know that comes up a lot. Like your intention has to be pure, your goal yeah. has to be pure, yada yada yada. So she but goes. Pure in doesn't with... mean moralistically good. It just means no, you no, have no, to no, be no. definitely like if no, she had a thing mean... going, I want to fuck this bitch up. Fine, <laughs> you know. But the thing but... is, the, the thing is, like, 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 could you actually ask one of God's angels? kill someone like is they, they, would it work I don't think it would work like that um, literally 90% of what angels do in the bible is kill other people it's like they're the military of the of God like they're bad motherfuckers who kill people <laughs> that's don't function like Archangel Michael is you know the head of the you know the war, the war in heaven you know and it's like he has the big spear he fucking kills Lucifer all of that like they're vicious yeah, but they're, not, vicious ki- they're not coming down and killing humans you know what I mean they're, they're... oh but they're, 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 it's like what's the whole thing at Passover you had to put the red thing in the door so that the angels wouldn't kill the good people because you know they didn't have their uh, corona oh the angels <laughs> were killing the babies Isn't it, the, it is the, the angels yeah but the, I thought that, it was God Huh. Yeah, but God has no agency on earth. His agency on earth is the angels, like same as Gabriel came down and fingered Mary and got her pregnant and all that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it's, it's yeah. also what the angels do the thing that you know God goes. Yeah, that'll happen. I and thought then the God, I thought God would just click his fingers and that's it. Like every all the babies die. No, you think God is no. literally God's God's like Bono up in heaven. You click, baby <laughs> yes. dies. Stop click, clicking. click, <laughs> stop clicking. <laughs> um, oh, we're going to hell now. Um, we can, it's okay we can summon angels and ask for a favour yeah. <laughs> I, I think yeah it's a good idea for film I, I would never do something like that I mean I don't 
but that's just me. I don't see magic as this kind of thing to do that. I think it's just, I think it's, Spud, for Spud, me, it's just something I have that a prediction. helps you. I have a prediction. In six oh, no. months' times, you'll be locked in a house, surrounded by no. salt, looking, looking for your guardian angel, going, I need it. I believe. <laughs> I'm pure. No, 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 no. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. Bye-bye. <sighs> Bye-bye. <laughs> it's my line. <laughs>